Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So tomorrow is the big garage sale at Stormville. I don't know what's tomorrow. Tomorrow is June 16th. It's a one day thing. It's at the Stormville airport and they call it the garage sale because like a thousand families show up with garage sale stuff. It's all in one place. It's pretty cool. Um, they kind of start letting people in the gate somewhere around 8 o'clock. If you get there a little earlier, 7.30, you might get in. If you get there before 7.30, they might tell you, no, you got to come back at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. I don't know. I try to get in as early as I can. So I have a friend who's setting up there, so I'll be using his, his name and uh, so forth. And hopefully I get in there earlier because that... You know, you kind of help people unload a little bit when you see a car with stuff that interests you. And then you could kind of put stuff aside before it even it even goes out and hopefully buy it. Anyway, why am I focusing on this thing? Well, it's one of a few things that I kind of kind of need. I need a um, a jug and a piston and the rods there, but I need the piston rings bore and everything else and what i like to do and particularly before i go to stormville especially this big one i like to just kind of cruise around and look in some of the sheds at some of the projects i have or partial projects or whatever else is going on and just kind of like to kind of look and kind of find things again to where they used to be or where they are now and and so forth kind of remember some of the projects and so forth yeah there's a couple of little little china quads in the back I kind of bought those they were they were dirt cheap back when I got them and they're, they're just I never started them never really never even looked at them just they were so cheap like you, you know I had to have them so I'm just I'm just kind of looking around it's a good time also I could do little things like notice how many sprockets are on this GY6 motor and all I also need a set of tires wheels for my um, Ryobi cart the rolling cart I bring around to flea markets one of them broke and the other one was cracked pretty badly I last time I had it out I really overloaded the heck out of it and I um, kind of broke the wheels up. Um, for looking for the china parts, this shed and the shed next door really are not the right places to look because these sh sheds were, you know, before china junk. <laughs> and uh, some of the other buildings are after china junk. It's always kind of good for me to look around though because I see stuff like you know I happen to need one of these guys quite honestly I needed the whole set of forks from this 200s and quite honestly I don't know if you can see it I, I don't want to fall through the floor here showing it to you oh I have a whole front wheel assembly right there for a 200s the brake the axle the whole bit so it's good that I get out and look in some of these sheds once in a while just to see what exists that's a 200x a 200x remember these things qa 50s there you go <laughs> there's the plastic off of uh atc 70 the handlebars off an x I think, yeah, I think right there is an ATC 70 on the shelf. I don't know if that's a um, an X or a 250, 200S. There's a big red and another ATC 200 or ATC 185. This, by the way, while we're talking about sheds and all, This was the worst shed 
I ever built by far and the horrible 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 shed and let me tell you the design completely wrong I mean if you want a cool fort for kids to hang out in yeah not a not a bad thing for that but as a shed to store stuff in especially heavy stuff a horrible shed mistake number one I left the eaves open so everything from bats to mice to birds to bees everything flies in there um, that's the first thing that was wrong the second thing that was wrong um, it's a huge step up I normally if you make the sheds 8 by 12 you could kind of do it with 2 by 4s which makes the whole floor thinner and if you put it on more level ground you, you know you could you could save yourself a huge step so it makes it hard to get things in and out of here this is 10 by 10 which means instead of being wide it's deep so you have a tendency to put stuff in the back and then put stuff in front of it so you can't get any of it out um, I put a shelf in there which at the time I thought was a pretty good idea but you put big heavy things on the shelf and then you put stuff in front of the shelf right to get anything off the shelf the first thing I need to do is get all this crap out of here so then I get something all the, off the shelf then I'm gonna put all this crap back in um, and lastly I mean having that much peak on the roof is nice because it sheds um, rain or snow or whatever pretty quickly but it was a pain in the neck to put the roof on it was hard to stay on there so this by far and wide is the worst worst design of a shed to ever ever build generally speaking if you're storing stuff you want your sheds low and you want them wide and you want big doors on them so if you want to take something out you can take it out and you can take multiple things out without removing um, something first so um, just a quick comment but what I'm not finding in here I mean it's good I found those 200 s components that I've been after but what I'm not finding in here is I'm not finding any of the China stuff or any of the wheels that I was after another couple of big reds these two are in really pretty nice shape one two that's a TRX 250SX um, this design for shed with the Gabriel roof isn't bad but to be honest you really don't need to do all that trivia I mean the base is always going to be the base if you put up two by four by eight you know whatever angle you want to put on it walls um, you make it so that the front door opens wide you nice 12 foot wide eight foot deep with a shelf across the back even if you have to put a support in the center I mean that's probably the most efficient shed this one wasn't bad and you could see I went with the 2x4 base it's pretty easy to get stuff in and out of but I'm not finding the wheels and I'm not finding any China stuff so these are the buildings it would have been in other things I noticed notice there's one big Honda up there I don't know if that's a 9 or a 10 and then there's another one back there once again 8 9 10 so I got a couple of Honda horizontal recoil start utility style engines horizontal shaft I also got that cart in here it's always good to rediscover some of these things I find it occasionally interesting carrying my big deal flashlight here just to kind of see what shape the motors in somebody worked on this before I got to it fenders in nice shape Looks like the front suspension's in nice shape. Looks like they put a real timing chain on it. 
complete exhaust right out the back. Oh, plus another rear end. 200S rear end. Might be out of this one. Round plug 200S. Anyway, it is always interesting to see what I have in here. I hope these gas tanks didn't go to hell. They don't look too bad on the bottom off the top of my head. Yeah, some nice looking looking stuff. I just need to dig up some more time to work on it. And once I work on them, I kind of like to keep them where I could get to them. And that's kind of fills up the garage. <laughs> and once the garage is filled, then I got nowhere to work. I need to, to get a museum. If I was allowed to, quite honestly, I would probably get a couple of 40 foot I mean this this is a reefer box off off a truck but I would probably get a, a couple of those 40 foot container type boxes and um, you put them on concrete you separate them and then in between the two of them you could put a roof um, so you do the storage inside the uh, the two boxes and then the area with the roof on it stays clean and dry and you could actually uh, work there um, even enclose a, an area of that and uh, turn it into a heated shop especially if you separate the um, the boxes by a little distance and the other nice thing on the so let's say between there and the garage is a box so you put a roof between the two of them you still got this side and that side to do a lean-to like you see here and even if the lean-to is only 12 foot that's 12 by 40 that's a lot of space that's almost just the lean-to is bigger than my garage eh? so if I could do that I would unfortunately my town is very fussy about putting up outbuildings like that and my neighbor said the code enforcement people were by his place and um, he put a um, you know canvas building up behind his garage and the code enforcement people showed up and wanted to see what was behind his garage when they saw it was only a canvas building they let him go they didn't you know give him any trouble but um, if it was a permanent building they would have given him trouble. Um, locking these things up is always a joy. Yeah, you know, if somebody really wanted to get in here, obviously they can figure it out and get in. I mean, the lock is basically to keep an honest man honest. My neighbors and the cameras <laughs> are to catch a crook in the act. All right, folks, I want to thank everybody for watching and commenting and subscribing. Please remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.